All right, how is everyone doing? I'm Rich Chalenza, and thanks for uh, checking out the Rich Chalenza show. WTF are you talking about? So um, what I want to get into today is parents and grandparents and my theories behind um, why a lot of kids, I believe nowadays, uh, millennials need a crack for their behavior. Not all of them. I think they're exceptionally intelligent. A lot of younger people, obviously. I love them. I have two daughters that are younger, uh, 19. Or actually, one's going to be 21 soon. But I think it's more in line with I see a lot of parents and how they behave toward their children, um, which I think a lot of them have to take the blame for a lot of what I believe are children behaving certain ways. And I'm not saying by any means I was some incredible child because I had my own issues growing up. Uh, But I see um, a lot of issues with a lot of parents on their parenting skills. Now, you may say I'm an asshole, which I don't give a shit. But I think what's happened to society is, for the most part, and I'm not talking every parent out there or even my family members, colleagues, and everybody. I'm not talking on a whole, but I do see a lot of this where parents have become pussies and enablers. And I'm going to call them out on that. Um... I think they really have spoiled their kids, right? And I understand it because I'll just back up a little bit here. I was raised, um, my mother was divorced when I was, I think, five years old or at least separated. And then my grandmother, who also helped raise me and my mother, uh, she was divorced with six children, um, which is kind of crazy in itself. And then we had, or I had, immigrant grandparents from Italy on one side of my family, um, living in Cicero, Illinois, or right outside of it, Chicago. And um, so what was very interesting about my interesting about my upbringing was that I had two totally different sides uh, of a family. So I both sides of my family were Italian. One was truthfully uh, more, I'm not going to say on a poverty level, but definitely on the lower middle class level. They just didn't have a lot of money. And then on my father's side, there was definitely an upper middle class element. Um, They all lived in much wealthier areas, wealthier homes. They had summer homes. They had all Cadillacs. They had summer, or I should say winter, uh, in South Florida, condominiums. Most of them had boats. So um, when I was on one side of my family, which I love very much, my mother's, which I think there's about 140, 160 cousins. It was a massive family. Um, a lot of them are painters at that time. Um, so it was, uh, it was just a harder life for them, it seemed like. My grandfather was, my great-grandfather was a painter. Um, I didn't know my other grandfather. Um, but then, um, to make a long story short, I lived in two totally different worlds when I was on one side to the other. My mother also kind of raised me wanting to be, I think she wanted me to become a priest and my father wanted to be a nightclub owner. So I was kind of bouncing between a mother and a lot of uh, religious functions, even going to religious camps, going to religious uh, Catholic high school. And on the other side, my father's kind of programming me to run a nightclub. So there was obviously a lot of, um, I guess you could say extremes in my life. It's always been like that. But what I did realize throughout my life is with parenting skills. So I think being, you know, having parents that were divorced, I kind of seen at a young age back in the 70s when they're all my friends, most of them, none of their parents were divorced. None of their grandparents were divorced. Where in turn, my mother was divorced and so was my grandmother, right? So that was an interesting dynamic. But I did learn how to respect, I think, on a much different level than a lot of other people did. Um, and I'm not just saying that to say that. Um, my mother and my grandmother, not my great grandmother, they had they were like the 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 mother and the father of the household, right? But I get that each generation wants to give more, right, to the one below them, especially like my grandparents wanted more for my mother's mother, and then my mother's mother wanted more for her mother. Sometimes that works out, sometimes it doesn't. My mother wanted me to have more than what she had, you know, same with my father. Um, but I think what happened with my generation, so I'm in my mid, I'm not, I'm almost 50. So I think what happened with my generation, just as my personal opinion, I don't, you know, I don't want to argue with everybody over this situation, but I think we wanted to give even more. And I think more things came, uh, including technology, uh, and things became a lot more expensive, but there became a lot more different opportunities, a lot more things to do. Obviously, even if you looked at our youth compared to theirs, including video games, cable, 
access to many different things, um, shopping, clothing, the internet, all these different things, uh, cell phones, obviously. There's tons of different things that became more expensive for our generation, but we kept wanting to give, which is fine. I think that's wonderful. Life's all about giving. My whole theory is about helping and giving, but I think what happened is we kept giving even when it wasn't warranted. And I'll stand behind this. I think a lot of parents kept giving, or if they had two, three, four kids, some kids behaved better than others, and you basically kept giving to the others equally because you felt a component that you always have to give the one you have to give to all, which I don't believe. If one kid's a jag off or an asshole, he doesn't deserve. I mean, that's just my grandfather, if I did something wrong, would threaten me or want to kick my ass. Same with my uncles or everyone else. When I did something right, I'd get rewarded. I mean, that's really, I believe, how you learn what's right and wrong. If I'm going to always be an asshole and still get everything I want, what do you expect me to grow up to be? I'm going to grow up to probably be an asshole. And what I see more than ever, and I just had this dispute at a dinner we had the other day, and I noticed a lot of parents were talking about punishing their children. Like, they didn't do this, so I had to take this away. And they didn't do that, and I had to take that away. And my theory was, if they don't do, you know, what you're saying originally then they don't deserve shit the next go around. That's kind of how it was for me. If I didn't do certain things, I didn't get certain things, right? But now back to like what I was saying. So when you are constantly giving and no one's reciprocating and you're being taken advantage of or your kids aren't listening to you, you're setting that up. So let me kind of get where this discussion really went to. So my theory was punishment's kind of a bullshit thing because I think what's happening with this generation is they're still constantly getting. So a lot of parents are like, here, here's a video game console, a new one. All right, wonderful. Uh, Here's a new video game. Okay, they misbehave. They're not getting the grades they're supposed to. They talk back, um, whatever they're doing at any different age. Then they take that away right? Even cell phones, I always hear. I had to take the cell phone away. What do you think they're thinking? Who gives a shit? I'm going to get the cell phone back. How's this though? Next time, you know, something comes up and they want something, you tell them, you know what? I forgot you were an asshole. I don't like the way you behaved. You're not getting another cell phone. Even if it breaks down, you're not getting another video game console. You're not getting a new video game. Because what I see more and more and more is talk about always giving And then when they don't behave, I take back, right? But then the kids know eventually they're getting that back. And the punishments are so weak, I think, most of the time. It's almost like a bullshit thing where when I was younger and somebody put the hammer down, I call it, the hammer came down. Usually it was more physical. But in this day and age, God forbid, everybody's a puss. You can't even touch your kids or talk back to them. Everybody's on edge. But kids need to know if they're not doing the right thing, there are going to be consequences, I mean, it really has to be that way. And I don't think a lot of parents, either they're afraid because of their kids not liking them, or I don't know if publicly they think their kids are going to say something about them, or they're too insecure to just say, hey, you know what, this is over from here on out. Like, this is what I'm expecting of you. If you don't do this, you're not getting this. Like, really saying that and really sticking to your guns. I think parents are afraid that their parents are gonna, or the kids are actually going to be like, well, no, I don't, I don't want to talk to you. You know, give you the silent treatment. Or on the other end, they're just going to slam their door and not listen to you and just do whatever they want to do. Because a lot of punishments, back to the punishment, it's like, okay, I'm taking your cell phone away. Well, who gives a shit? They have an iPad or they have a computer at home. So if they need to do anything for the most part, they have that. Or I'm going to take your video game away. Who cares? They got 500 channels on cable. They could do that as well. Or now you take their video game console away. Now they're on their phone playing video games. Like there's all these different outlets that you kind of know what's going on, but you're kind of bullshitting yourself as a parent, I believe. And especially going back to treating each kid, if you have more than one kid, differently than the other. And people are like, you can't favor. You, there's no such thing as favoring anybody. If somebody's going to respect you, if one child respects your values... And that doesn't mean that they'd have to have the same values when I say that. That doesn't mean like, like I believe in God, hypothetically say my kid doesn't, that they have to be grounded or any of that. No, you have to respect your kid's values. But there's a difference between your values are, hey, I don't expect when you get home 
to do this or stay up this late or I expect you when you go to school to get these type of grades. I expect you if you're not doing maybe something to get a job part time or I expect these things, right? And not just to kind of just say them, but I mean really put the hammer down and say, no, this is what I expect of you. Because you know what? Your kids are constantly expecting from you to get certain things, right? They expect you to pay your mortgage or they expect you to make a car payment. They expect you to pay for the electricity. They expect you to feed them constantly. What what are you expecting of them, right? Because I keep looking at a lot of kids. Um, I see a lot of parents and all them like, what are you really setting your kid up to be in the future for their kids, And I hate to say this, that gets a little scary for me because I'm not going to throw my daughters under the bus or certain people, and I don't mean this towards my daughters or any cousin, family members, but I see a lot of these older teens or early 20s, they were kind of catered to. They really never learned how to cook. Uh, They really never learned how to do a lot of things, I think, as far as being the next generation of a parent, if that makes sense. Because a lot of them are used to really being on their phone, being on their computer, going to Starbucks, shopping, all these other things. And I'm not saying they're going to be bad parents because I think eventually, you know, that's ridiculous to say. But I still think it's going to be a long or a shocking type environment for them because the truth is I think a lot of us, I'm throwing myself in there, have catered to our kids. My kids were very fortunate. They grew up in Orlando, Florida, and I call them professional tourists. And uh, thank God my kids were not uh, not in the drugs, alcohol, or none. Of, I haven't had any of these issues, not even boy issues, which is kind of who knows, whatever. I've had my own issues like everybody else with their kids. Uh, but my kids grew up in what I call a fantasy land. Their whole life was having season, year-round tickets to Disney, Universal, SeaWorld, going to the beach. I mean, Florida's an incredible place to grow up, especially Orlando. Especially they were two girls, so I used to call them the princesses because their whole life, they especially in their youth, they thought they were princesses, right? Um, but they were very catered to. Even, and I get in disputes with my, not my father as much, my mother always wants to cater to them and always is giving to them, which I love that about my mother and I'll never stop her. But a lot of grandparents, I think as well, want to give a lot to their grandchildren, which is wonderful. But I also think a lot of grandparents need to step aside sometimes and say, you know what, I got to listen to you know, or I'm not, the kid's not behaving a certain way. I'm going to stand behind the parent because he's putting the hammer down. So I'm going to team up with him and say, you know what? Have a talk with them as well and say, you know what? I don't like the way you're talking to my son or daughter if they're in the grandparent position. Uh, and vice versa. If I've seen this with a lot of kids, I think a lot of kids disrespect grandparents. And I want to crack them across the face. I don't go for that bullshit. I'll tell you right now. You know, you should be catering to your grandparents. You know, like younger generations, they don't want to be bothered now. And even when you go out to dinner, they're looking at their phones or they don't have time to even text their grandparents or take a phone call from them. I mean, that makes me irate. I spent a lot of time with my grandparents. They taught me a lot of different things. And then when you look back in life, maybe they don't give a shit about grandparents now. And I can see maybe if I was born in this generation or this time, I may have not had um, the relationship I had because I'd have is what I call tons of different distractions, right? I didn't have a cell phone. I didn't have, you know, I sit down and watch whatever my grandparents wanted to watch for television. If I went out for dinner, I went where they wanted to go. It was basically all Italian driven, but it wasn't like now where a lot of kids, like we we almost got to cater to our kids where where they want to eat or what they're in the mood for, even going through two drive-throughs because one wants Taco Bell and one wants chicken filet or all these type of different things. And same with grandparents. I see grandparents constantly kind of trying to cater to their grandchildren. And um, I think that's, that's the next subject I was going to kind of flip it around is, is not only grandparents, but I see a lot of ki- uh, people my age, friends, colleagues, family members, stuff, I think they treat their parents like shit, which again, I need to slap them in the face. You know, my father once said at a very young age, I was just, just, just discussing this with my Uncle Tony and my mother and my Aunt Kathy when I was in Chicago. And my dad, you know, I used to always feel like I was owed sometimes, like, you know, because I, I resemble my dad to a certain degree and we had a, late, a lot of same things like, hey, you know, you got a, a sports car. I, I need a sports car. You, you should get me that sports car. or You owe me this kind of like that type of attitude. And my dad once looked at me and says, you got to realize, I don't owe you anything. I gave you life. <laughs> if anything, you owe me. And it was like, kind of shocking to hear that. And I once told my mother that. My mother's like, I can't believe he talked to you this way. 
And she still gets upset, but I'm like, mom, the truth is you nor my father owe me anything. I owe really my life to you. I, 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 I couldn't be more grateful. And I think what's happening a lot of times, like our kids kind of being a lot of times too busy for parents, a lot of us are acting like we're too busy for our parents. Uh, I don't see a lot of my friends, um, family members and all of them calling their parents as much as they should. Um, and I'm not saying you got to be up their ass all the time. That's not what I'm trying to say. I'm just talking a respect value, right? Because I see even people my age in their you know, mid-50s, I don't care what age they are, uh, or late 30s or whatever. It seems like when they want something from their parents, that's who they run to, right? They want something, they're always... You know what I mean? Always have no problem asking for it or manipulating a way to get it. And then once they get it, they kind of disappear, right? They kind of, I'd hate to say, use their grandparents to a certain degree. And I see a lot of kids doing the same thing with their parents. They're kind of being manipulated. Uh, It's not consistent with their behavior. So one minute they're very friendly and nice. And as you know, even your kids, they'll start doing well in school or or they'll start doing something well, start behaving a certain way, but kind of... As time goes on, they get what they want out of you. And then before you know it, they revert back into being an asshole or not respecting you. Uh, and I see that going out with parents and great uh, and grandparents and even great grandparents. So, And I get a lot of times we all run out of patience with whoever it is. Like I run out of patience with my mom and dad at times. They ran out of patience with me. I ran out of patience with my own kids. They ran out of patience, you know, I'm sure with me. Uh, We all go through those time periods. And again, we need to get back to being thicker skinned. We're all going to do things and say things that we may resent. That's just the way life is, but we have to learn to move on. I see people being so thin skinned now. It blows me away back to my Italian immigrant uh, grandparents. My grandfather blew me away. He would tell me exactly the way it is. And I love that about him because I always knew where he stood, but now we're I think a lot of parents are afraid to really say what they believe or what they expect out of their kids or if they don't like certain things, right? It's almost like you're still babying them. My mother used to yell at me a lot of times when I was, my kids were younger and she's like, you talk to them like they're adults, even when they were five, six, seven, eight years old, when we'd go to dinners or restaurants. I'm like, I want them to understand that they're not babies, right? They're, they're going to be dealing and I want them to be comfortable around adults and learn how to talk to adults and listen, you know, like just be comfortable around that environment. But then on the other end, I was always at theme parks like Disney, Universe. like I, I kind of believe that I knew how to have fun when it was time to have fun, but I definitely wasn't and I don't want to be a parent that's a best buddy or a sidekick. I want my kids to understand that I am there for them at all times. I'm their dad, you know, or their papa as they would say. That's who I am. I don't care what age it is. I don't, you know, they're catching up with me on age as far as them being adults. That still doesn't mean I'm going to allow you to swear in front of me. I'm definitely not going to allow you to treat my my parents any way than that I wouldn't allow them to be treated. Uh, my friends or anybody. I don't. That is just. You, I think what happened is too. A lot of people, even from a political standpoint, a religious standpoint, now it's very confusing. And I get that because when we were younger, back to the 70s and 80s and things, we kind of just followed suit with what our parents wanted. If they were Christians or Catholics or Lutherans or Baptists, whatever, you followed suit, which made sense, right? I almost think now uh, parents sometimes to a certain degree with religion are afraid to, uh, you know, if their kids just, if they're religious and their kids aren't, like you can't talk about that. Well, too bad. If you're religious, your kids should listen to it. If they're not religious, you're listening to them. And I think everybody needs to really be open-minded more, even from a political standpoint, because a lot of kids I'm seeing aren't usually on the same political wavelength, I guess you could say, or, uh, you know, one, you know, some parents may be Republicans and their kids are Democrats or, or vice versa or whatever it is. I don't give a shit. But you have to understand when it comes to those subjects, you have to have respect for one another's opinions. You don't want to scream at them either. And I'm not telling people also when coming to... or talking about programming you know your children to be exactly who you are and your beliefs again that's the worst thing i think i think the best way regarding raising children that i've seen is by keeping an open mind and finding out what they're interested in uh, and obviously protecting them at all costs but also learning how to treat people i think that's one thing that the younger generation is having in a major issue with is if you don't agree with them they almost become argumentative 
or spiteful, right? And I don't get that either because I'm not going to stand for that and I wouldn't want anybody else to either. But a lot of younger people I see, uh, I think they've also become very accustomed with social media and stuff and voicing their opinions uh, or getting bullied maybe or arguing or bullying and all these different things where your life is kind of extremely exposed, I guess you uh, you could say. Where I think my generation, um, I'm not saying they don't expose themselves on social media. That's ridiculous. They absolutely do. But we didn't have to deal with all them, you know, that type of environment because social media has changed the world we live in. You know, the internet is definitely different. Um, So we really have to think about that. And I think the one thing I have to, I had to learn as a parent is to be as patient as possible because I didn't realize how you know, how I was programmed and how I want to program my children. And it's interesting because if you, I lived in Chicago, so I was programmed there. And then you kind of come to a state like Florida and you're kind of installing all the values of Chicago and being an Italian or being all these things into them or what you think is right. And a lot of my opinions aren't right always, especially for two girls. And I used to say that all the time, like, how much can I really uh, relate to them? They're two young ladies. Uh, there's a 30 year difference between be- me and my kids. So obviously I do have a lot of, we have two totally different outlooks on life. We're growing up in two totally different environments. Two totally, like my mother's environment, my mother's only 18 years older than me. My grandmother's only 15 years older than her. Our environments weren't that different. But then when technology came along and even wealth and everything in our country came, it's came a long way. So my kids grew up in a much, I believe, wealthier environment, better environment. Um, So I get that. But what I don't get though, is them not appreciating that and not respecting what they have or what others have given them, right? To a certain degree, because most I think younger people don't realize everything they have is because somebody else gave it to them. Most of them did not earn it. They don't understand that concept. I don't even think they understand money to a certain degree because money is being shuffled from my phone bank account to theirs or uh, you know, from a bank account to their phone or from one bank to the other. Like we grew up with cash. We kind of knew what the substance of cash meant or it's, it's just a different environment where it's just like a number to them. Like, oh, we need, oh, I need $200 for this. I need $100 for this, $50 for this. Unless they've worked for long periods of time, Um, They really, I don't think, understand the value of money. I mean, they know money. They're not stupid. And they understand it's, you know. But I think it's almost expected like, yeah, your parents should have money by the time they're that age. And they should be able to pay for everything I want or I need. They may not be saying that out loud. But I could assure you most likely that's what they're thinking. Right? So, anyways. I'm going to wrap it up pretty soon with that one. But if you have a chance, always call your parents. Always call your grandparents, your aunts, your uncles. Spend as much time as you can with them. I just did a trip not long ago with my two uncles. My dream was to go to Italy with them. My two Italian uncles and my cousins, we did it. Uh, I think I got to take my father to Italy. My mother's already been there. But uh, that's another one. My dad's always wanted to go to Italy. I have a friend that always said her mother's from China. They lived in New York, Chinatown. Wanted to go to China with her. She blew her off, blew her off. Then she got so sick. I think eventually she passed away. And all her mother wanted to do was take her back to her native country or native city and show her. And she said, that's the one thing she resented in her life. So um, anyway, so that's something to think about. But I, you know, I've lost on one side of my family, a lot of aunts and uncles on the other side of my family. Uh, I have still a lot of them around. And every day I think about her, you know, like my aunts and uncles, and I think about what, you know, missing them. Because once they're gone, they're gone, right? And I think a lot of people, what kind of blows me away on social media, Facebook, and all these other things, they're always like, um, you know, posting things about, you know, you know, their mothers, their fathers, and all these wonderful things, I think, publicly. But I think when it comes down to being in the home, I don't see that love and care. And I have a massive amount of family members. And I can just say a lot of them, I think, either treat their family really well and then some do not. And not everyone's perfect. But I definitely think um, we need to really sit back and start figuring out like what truly, you know, how do you really want to be treated? Because I believe a lot of times my kids see the way I treat my mother and father and how patient I am with them and how patient my mother and father are with me. Right, I believe that, and how uh, how I will go out of my way for my grandmother that's still alive. Right, 
my great grandmother lived to 93 years old from Italy, which was amazing. And my other grandmother passed away when I was in my teens. But I think you have to set an example for your kids. Uh, I really believe that, and I don't. Th- I think there's a lot of um, negativity, and I think there's been a lot of divorces in our country, especially in the last 20 years. Even a lot of parents that were older that got divorced, or they're still together and they're miserable living in separate rooms and all these things, but we have to really come together and learn to love one another again, respect one another, and show our kids we are not here to be taken advantage of. And our parents should be taking advantage of us, our kids should be taking advantage of us, and we should definitely not be taking advantage of our parents or our kids, okay? That's really something uh, that needs to be addressed because I think a lot of people um, are just taking advantage of one another and then when they don't get what they want, then they just cast you out. And family members, a lot of times, and that could go for siblings as well, um, there's a lot of problems there. You just start need to address them. Don't, if there was problems 10, 20 years ago or, or 10 minutes ago, address them, your family. Don't pretend it doesn't exist. If you have a problem, please bring it up. Same with your kids. You gotta have a relationship with your kids like, hey, what's the problem? I'm gonna always be honest with you. They'll be honest back. I really believe it. They're learning from you. And if they do do certain things uh, behind your back or start manipulating things that you don't like, call them out on it. So I'm going to wrap it up there. I got a little nuts with the family stuff today. Um, I'm going to start interviewing a lot of my family members and friends. I'll probably be getting in jams with them regarding this, which will be exciting. So uh, again, thanks for checking out the Rich Salenza show, WTF you talked about. I got a YouTube channel, Rich Salenza. Um, I got a Mastering Self-Confidence program that helps men find the women or women of their dreams, even if they've been through a bad breakup or divorce. That's a whole nother podcast regarding, you know, when you go through a divorce, uh, what happens obviously with your children, nothing is ever the same. I mean, no matter what anybody says, uh, I could get on a whole tangent with that, but I'm not going to. But um, that's really all. Thanks again for listening in. Take care.